This quest is linear, so Louis II is coming mainly to flaunt his erudition and annoy Völna. Emily, I must speak to you. What's the matter, Louis? About last night, I'm guessing. I... sadly, no. Even if I'd like to have, I... Alas, there are more pressing matters. I have news about your sister. What have you found out? I was given to understand that my mother and your sister bonded during their stay. If mother's really killed her sister, I'd better find her by myself. They say they spent a lot of time together. They got along well. Oh, really? Do you think your mother liked Duchess Hillsborough? Of course she did. After all, she's your sister. Well, we'll find them, Emily. Trust me. Should I speak to her about my vision? If what I saw is true, she might want to take revenge. Emily, there's something else. Go on then. It's... it's about your sister. I don't know what happened exactly, but it's possible that my mother had a go at her. I know, Louis. I found out that same evening. Well, thanks for not trying to hide it. What? Why didn't you tell me? I didn't know if I could trust you. Now I know I can. It seems that your mother tricked Emma. She apparently asked her to hide an important book, so that even she wouldn't know where it was. And then she shot her like a dog to make sure no one would ever find it again. How did you find out? Sir Gregory told me on my arrival. I'm sincerely sorry, Emily. Thank you, Louis. You're very kind. It means a lot to me. But you do realize your mother will have to accept the consequences of her acts. Th there must be an explanation, Emily. That's what we shall see. We'll speak about it later, somewhere safe. Come, Louis. They're waiting for us. And who is this charming character? Manuel Godoy, the Duke of La Alcudia. He's the head of the Spanish government, Monsieur de Richer. He's the one who, in practice, controls Spain. How could you dare? Oh, shush. If I remember rightly, what Mother told me one night, King Louis was secretly also part of the Order. I wonder what impact his death will have on us. Sad news, sir. Let's skip ahead. Any news of her? Have you found her, maybe? To hear you speak, you seem to know my mother well. Uh, not really. Uh, we met for the first time on this very spot uh, some weeks back. Uh, we had a very pleasant discussion. She's an exceptionally learned lady with a good head for business. Uh, no need for me to tell you that. I agree. Uh, did she tell you about our arrangement? Absolutely, but I was hoping that you could tell me more about it. Well, she was planning to sell me a very old book. I will make no secret of the fact that I am passionate about the subject. And when Sarah spoke to me about it, her account literally had me enthralled. <laughs> I can think of nothing else since. You might have come across some old books in her belongings, perhaps? As my mother's got so many old books, uh, I'm afraid I won't be able to... Oh, it's easy. You, you can't mistake this one. It's an ancient grimoire, composed of seven parts. Each one is closed under lock and key. It was made in such a way that if someone tried to tamper with it, the sheets would be permanently tarnished. If you find it, you mustn't tamper with it, you see? That, that's unusual. Unfortunately, that doesn't ring a bell. I'll look again, but I wouldn't get my hopes up. You seem very upset. Is it so important to you, this book? Well, it's, uh, it's the search of a lifetime. What can I say? Every time I move closer to it, it seems to slip away at the last minute. I was very surprised to learn that your mother had it in her possession. I thought it was with a certain von Borchert 
in Paris. Do you know him? Indeed. One of your close friends? Uh, no, not really, but we were close once. Precisely over the case that concerns us now, because he claimed to have the book I'm looking for. Another dishonest person. What can you say? Can't trust anyone these days, huh? No. No. You can't. I hope I've been able to satisfy your curiosity, Mr. Von Volner, and that you succeed in finding what you're looking for. Oh, and so do I. And now, what if you told me who you really are working for, instead of keeping up this pretense? I beg your pardon? We both know what you're looking for, Von Volner. You're the one who Von Burchard was planning to sell it to. For centuries, all those who have come into contact with the Al-Azif have bitterly regretted it, Monsieur de Richet. You are playing a dangerous game. Please know that I am working for someone who does not appreciate anyone poking around in his business. Let me guess. It's Sir Gregory. Correct. You ought to know then, he is not a man who likes to be duped. You are walking on thin ice, sir. You better go and check out the painting in Lord Mortimer's study. Wasn't Emily also working on getting the book to Gregory? Oh. I bet someone's going to say this piece is impossible to play in a harp. Although I'm no expert. Anyway, there was one, one more option to try with Napoleon. I'm sure that a soldier such as yourself is not interested in vulgar rumors. Quite right. If only this cursed gossip didn't come to stain the uniform he has the audacity to wear. Don't you find him worthy? But how could he be, monsieur? He never sets foot on the battlefield to occupy it with charming the queen. Have you any idea of the number of titles that coward has won in just a few years? No, not really. Ten! And that Don Juan spends the best part of his time under the Queen's skirts. The bugger must have some hidden talent, given all of the gifts she gives him. I understand your point of view. Now this guy. I wonder what promise Lord Mortimer could have made to make him agree to come here, given the circumstances. Who knows? Thanks, George. Well, thank you for your time. Don't mention it, my young friend. I've got a bunch of traits and talents just now. Emily got me logic. How nice. Right, what else was there? A talent, I think. One science for fully exploring von Völner. And vigilance. Wait, am I really done with the old goat? Yep, he's clear. More rumors about Godoy. Ah, Louis. Just the man. Good lord. How did the king come to be executed? I would think that the order would have intervened. I invite you to speak about it with my mother as soon as she reappears. Not sure how I'm supposed to unlock the I know of his reputation response. As to his faith, I have no doubt. However, his ambition seems to surpass his morality, and I hope that it will not solely the crown. You can say that again. The blue eyes of the latest Infanta, Maria Isabel, have left everyone wondering. Rumors always accompany men of power, your eminence. Naturally. But the number of awards and titles granted by the Queen during these past four years leaves little doubt. So, Godoy really is this out-and-out -out rascal who uses his charm on the Queen. Thank you for everything, your eminence. I shan't take up it. Hold on. The horse ass painting. The Fall of Phaeton. Another painting by Rubens. Poor Phaeton, struck by lightning for borrowing his father's chariot and losing control of it. Moral, 
don't steal Dad's chariot. That was worth it. There's the alchemical. We can crack it open now. I guess I'm full on stuff. Notes. Oh, mom's notes. Crap, you, you basically can't get them unless you find the keys someplace or pick the lock. And Emily here, as you can see, is coping with the loss of her sister through gazing at Pi's longingly. Why did she react to that thing in the secret museum if she knew Emma had been shot? That's strange. So, what did my mother mean by going beyond the nightmare? Oh, I'm so happy there is no walking off platforms in this game. It's a complex mechanism. Hmm. Looks like the third ring is a bit seized up. It gets stuck on number nine. Another physical hint. But there are also the book and the painting we can analyze this time. That's what you generally feed birds. Judging by the shape, I'd say the Criollo cocoa beans. The chocolate of the Mayas, the rarest of the beans. Some even say they're an aphrodisiac. When a product is in fashion, people attribute all sorts of virtues to it. Not to be given to animals. This seems to be the list of grants and sponsorships given by the Mortimer family. Prepare to be amazed. In 1489, the Mortimer family participates in the purchase of the Caravel Santa Clara from Juan Nino, shipowner, on behalf of Don Luis de la Cerda. The vessel will be renamed La Nina. La Nina, yes! That's one of the three caravels of the expedition of Christopher Columbus. It enabled him to discover the Americas. Well, you can certainly say that grandfather had a flair for business. In 1645, the Mortimer family allocated a pension to be passed down the generations to the Nerac family from Bordeaux, ship owners and refiners from father to son, a family known for the expeditions to Africa and America. In 1235 to 1280, the Mortimer family granted an annual pension to Albert the Great, Archbishop of Regensburg, in order to fund his research in the writing of Mirabilibus Munsi, books about the wonders of the world. Let's not forget it recorded the recipe for gunpowder in the form of an anagram. They democratized firearms in Europe, no less. In 1513, the Mortimers financed an expedition of Ponce de Lyon to the New World. That was the expedition that resulted in the discovery of Florida, in fact. In 1772, Lord Mortimer made a donation of 112,000 pounds to the attention of Achille Basmarin, major ship owner of Bordeaux, for the construction of a ship, the Clary. But that's Lafayette's ship. I thought he paid with his own coin. It's even been suggested that grants were given by the order, but in fact, that wasn't true at all. In 1635, the Mortimer family sponsored the Academy of Mersenne for 30 years in Paris for works in the sciences and in philosophy. That was generous, but not entirely selfless when you think about Blaise Pascal, who developed the first calculating machine at the same time. From 1685 to 1720, the Mortimer family allocated an annual pension to Denis Papin for his brilliant works in pneumatics and hydraulics. That reminds me of spectacular experiments such as his first submarine, which didn't end all that well if I remember correctly. In my opinion, his lesser known invention of the steam piston ought to be more important in the future. Well, that's strange. I thought he died in 1712. Let's see just how they butcher Ivan Vasilievich. Uh, by the way, that's not really a name, that's a patronym, and is rarely used with a number. 
In 1550, the Mortimer family financed half of the construction of St. Basil's Cathedral in Moscow by way of protocol gift for Ivan IV Vasilievich, one of the most beautiful religious buildings ever built. Well, it's colorful, I give it that. So he's Vasilievich now. Great. Many families kept documents of their history, but I've never seen anything like this before. Such regularity in writing them up through the generations for such a long time. First time I've ever seen that. Mortimer gives considerable importance to his origins. That's undeniable. And somehow they all had the same signature, if you recall. William Alexander Mortimer I, the twelfth month of Anna Lucis, 5190. That's a funny date. The date's calculated in Anna Lucis. The twelfth month is February? So that makes makes it February 1191. Puzzle sold. A painting depicting the Third Crusade. It's titled Winter Before the Fall of Saint Jean d'Acre. Okay, I'll pay. From what I know, the fall of Saint Jean d'Acre took place in the summer of 1191. Now, according to this title, it's winter time on the painting, so it can't have been late in the year of 1191. It must be in the first months of that year, probably in January or February of that year. Coup de Lance by Paul Rubens. It's Christ on the cross as Longinus pierces his side with his spear. Rubens, he was a great painter. I'm sorry, which part of that is Christ on the cross? It might as well be titled Christ on a bike with roughly the same accuracy. The hell? Hey, there are two dates on this painting. 1154 AD and 5154 AL. The two dates most likely relate to two calendars. The Gregorian calendar and well, the Freemason calendar. In case you haven't read the freely available note. History of the First Crusades by Pierre Amédée de la Sarde. Hey, the dates indicate AL and it looks like 4,000 years have been added to our calendar. All oh, that counting system again. The author is Pierre Amade de la Salle, none other than the Grand Master of the Masonic Lodge of Paris. Now I understand why the dates are offset. He's using dates based on the Analusis, year zero of the Masonic calendar, by adding 4,000 years to the Gregorian calendar. I thought that the calendar starts in March. In case you're really slow. The famous call from Pope Gregory VIII in his Odita Tremendi Bull of 5,187. Oh, the crusade where Richard the Lionhearted distinguished himself. It states the first sea blockade of Saint Jean d'Acre was broken in the 12th month of 5,190 AL, whereas the siege had been going on for two years. Let's go, I can't take us anymore. Anyway, so now we're inside Mortimer, and can pick this. Motif representing the alchemical symbol of fire. Oh, a coin. Oh, a coin. Oh, uh, how many of them are there? Wait, that, that, that's that got to be at least five in one spot. And I can't read that book anymore because I've maxed out the skill. Uh, yes, that's another coin. Something strange about this. I can piece. science this. What kind of experiments does Mortimer carry out here? It's a dissection table. So Mortimer does autopsies here on his desert island. Who is he doing autopsies on then?
Look, a pack of tarot cards. Has he been reading the cards? Mortimer? <laughs> that would surprise me. It is a typical draw on a line that answers a specific question. To the left, temperance, that announces a reward for one who patiently waits before taking any action. And in the middle, the chariot, which symbolizes triumph and business success. To the right, the emperor evokes a future full of power and stability. So, about that meeting with Peru. Oh shit. How am I going to get out of here now? This looks like the same mechanism as the one on the other side. Let's get all the hints. It looks too easy. It could be a trap. These cylinders rotate on the same central axis. So when I enter a number on one side, it corresponds to another one on the other side. The mechanism passes through the wall. The wheels are the same on both sides. Chances are the combination I used on the other side works on this side too. I can't be bothered to solve this. It looks like the same as the one on the other side. Whoa, whoa. If the grid closes a bit more every time I enter a wrong date, I'd, I'd better not mess up again. It doesn't seem to be working. Is that the guillotine device? This looks like the same mechanism as the one on the other side. I'm sorry for this poor Louis IV imitation. Satterfuge costs more. Huh. Game, this Louis picks locks free. So, no harm done. <sighs> the wheels are stuck shit. I'm cornered like a rat. Someone's coming. Please don't let it be Mortimer. Who is it? Deliberately avoiding me. Four years ago I was his favorite, but nowadays I have to ask for an audience with his lordship. Damn it! It's Peru. Monsieur Peru! It's Mr. Deriche. I'm sort of trapped behind this painting. What are you playing at, goddammit? Help me out of here, please! How can I open it? There's a pedal under Lord Mortimer's desk! Can you see it? There's no... Hang on. Yes. Good. Now press it. Yeah, yeah. Done. You should see something resembling a frame with numbers. Yes? You have to turn them to set the combination. One, one, nine, one. Well, well, well. Poking our nose into Mortimer's little secrets, are we? You do surprise me. It's not what you're thinking. I'll explain everything. No, you will not, sir. It has nothing to do with me, and by the way, I never even saw you. So, I'll be on my way now. Thanks again. I'm indebted to you. I won't forget this. Yeah, goodbye.
I've wasted enough time. I better get moving if I want to find my mother. They weren't lying about meeting him under strange circumstances. This painting isn't finished. And it looks like Mortimer probably did it. Not bad, but you can't exactly say it's been done in the wow. style of the period. So, this Louis has vigilance now, I think. And uh, that means I can, for example, search other people's belongings or notice clues. Also, I see he's getting close to a top tier talent. That's going to be useful too. Shit, I forgot to feed the damn bird. Could have given it aphrodisiacs. Oh well. No big loss of XP here. Next time we'll search for our mum in the garden, obviously. Louis IV is... Uh, Still dead.